Um, well, Marilis is here today then to talk about wellness and a bunch of other wonderful things. So we're all, um, we're very happy and thrilled that you're here today. If you could tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into this space, um, and we'll start there. Sure. Sounds great. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. My name is Marilis Self. Uh, in total, I have over 20 years of experience, most of my adult life as a military spouse. So I know this lifestyle. I understand this lifestyle. I understand the challenge. Try working. The arena that I work in right now is the holistic world. A yoga teacher. So I'm a 200 hour certified yoga teacher. Wow. I focus on Hatha or restorative style. So super gentle yoga. I am also a Reiki master. Reiki is an energy uh, technique and I'm a master mindfulness practitioner. So I always say, you know, all that together just means that energy is my jam. That's fantastic. Well, we're again, thrilled that you're here. And so because of what's been happening the past couple days, weeks, what have you been focusing on? Like, since you know this space so well, what have you been focusing on to take care of yourself? So wellness in general and being uh, attentive to that is part of my daily practice. But even for me, it has taken me out of my usual comfort zone and I've had to adapt. So we are all becoming adaptable right now. Some of the ways that I am doing that personally, and I certainly suggest for all of you, make sure you're getting out and getting fresh air, getting some vitamin D, getting that sunshine, keep your body in motion. So even I'm used to teaching a class every day and being active and, you know, going out and, and working with clients and going to the gym. So it's kind of made me more sedentary. So make sure you're getting up and moving your body and yoga is a beautiful way to do that. So I've just had to make sure that I'm doing my own home practice as well, um, making sure that you are taking time to for self-care. Mm -hmm. So it can be a super, super challenging if you are used to being alone during the day. So if you have children or a spouse that are now home all of the time, just making sure that you are still taking time for yourself, um, keeping your brain active. So that can mean reading a book, learning something, you know, Online, I have so many resources uh, like Coursera right now is offering a great um, course on well-being, totally free, uh, and meditate. I'm a huge fan of meditation, and one of the great resources for that is a free app called Insight Timer. So mm -hmm. I try to incorporate all of these things within my day to keep my well-being as best as it can be with the current circumstances. Right. Well, and you mentioned yoga, and we'll be getting into some of that later. So everybody, I hope you wore your stretchiest, stretchy pants <laughs> so we can get into some good poses. Um, so you mentioned that you are in all of, you're in Reiki, you're in yoga, um, you've been trained on this for what you said, about 20 years or so. How so did you get in, or how'd you get into this space? So in this field, I've been working in this field for about four years. Okay. So i military spouse for 20 years. Tracking. Okay, good. So um, I kind of just landed in this field. Uh, and we say in the energy world that it, it kind of finds you, like when the timing is right and it's time for you to go on this journey, so to speak. And that's exactly what happened. It was uh, my one year anniversary with my current spouse and we, were, we had a spa day. And I need, we had this bundle that was like, you can pick three services and of the three, of my choices. I certainly didn't want a facial peel or anything extreme like that. So I saw the, a listing for Reiki and said, okay, well, it sounds kind of cool. Let me try it. It's a relaxation technique. Why not? So um, I, it began there. So having that experience and, and just feeling for myself how relaxing that technique can be really just opened me wide open to holistic practices. And I knew for myself in a second marriage, I had things that I needed to overcome, you know, from divorce, from separating from a military lifestyle, and then coming back into the military lifestyle as a spouse. So I just had some things I needed to work on and heal. And I was very interested in finding a way to do that holistically. And 
that kind of led to the yoga teacher training. Reiki definitely works on the spirit and mind. And I wanted a body component. So naturally, yoga was the perfect companion. So the two work so well together. And the mindfulness piece just kind of wraps it all up well. So after experiencing it for myself, I knew the benefits. I experienced the benefits. I experienced the healing in my mind and body and spirit. And I really wanted to bring that to my military community and military spouse community. Okay. Well, and you talk about Reiki and you, you talked a little bit about what it entails, but it's funny because I feel like that has been a buzzword this past year. And even if you walk into a bookstore, there's all the books on Reiki and, and it seems like it's something that a lot of people are interested in. So can you do kind of a deep dive into what that entails? And if you are going to go do that um, or go see somebody to do a Reiki treatment or however you say it, what, what does that entail? Okay. So let me give you a little basics of what Reiki is. Okay. Reiki is in the healing arts field. It is of Japanese origin and it is an energy relaxation technique. So what actually, I'll give you insight of what actually is happening. So when the Reiki practitioner is working with a client, we begin with a conversation. Okay. What are you and some people just come in and say, I just want to feel relaxed. But some people have things they want to work through. So the belief is that we all have chakras. So these are energy systems in the body. There are over 150, but the primary run down the midline of the body. And these house certain emotional energy. So when we are working with Reiki, we are helping clients relax so that their body and mind can relax and their natural healing ability can begin to take place within the body. So if you think about things like fight or flight, where when we're in fight mode, the body is not relaxed. It's not able for to begin healing itself inside, like that um, cellular healing can't happen. Because sure. But when we are relaxed, then the body can begin to heal then the mind can begin to calm. So that is always the primary goal, is to help people to get to a point of relaxation where they can begin to think a little more clearly, where their body can begin to kick in and heal itself naturally. So what I do is I hold space for the client. The word Reiki, Re means God's wisdom or inner higher power wisdom. Okay. Key the word key means life force energy. And you might have heard this in other practices as chi mm -hmm. as well. So Reiki really means for us as the practitioner, we are holding space and harnessing source energy for the client. So what's happening is they are usually lay on a massage table and it, it can be hands on or hands off. If it's hands-on, it's a safe touch modality. That means there's no manipulation of the body, no massaging is taking place. It's a light touch to help facilitate relaxation. So it's, the benefits include stress reduction. The body begins to soften as people relax. So that's why people feel like their body is beginning to heal physically. And just kind of an open mind, you begin to just become aware, more aware of yourself because you are giving yourself that time to just relax. How long does a session last when they come? If that's, if you call this session, is that what yeah. it would be? Okay. Yes. So a session typically lasts an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. If okay. the time is about an hour and 15 minutes, there is a conversation piece that happens in the beginning that's really crucial and important. And sometimes, again, the person comes in and they just want to relax. They just want to feel relaxed. So if you are going to a Reiki practitioner, they will ask you where you are energetically. And you might not understand what that means. It's really just a conversation about what brought you there? What made you think, yeah, let me give this a try. And that might be, I just want to feel relaxed. I have plenty of clients who feel that way. And actually often the service members, that's the answer that I get. I just need to relax. So right. active service members just need that space. Um, and sometimes people are on a different kind of journey. They might want to begin to open their minds to awareness, or maybe they are beginning to come to try something new, 
be, get on a different level in their lives, maybe with education goals or with spiritual goals or anything. And they just want to feel like they can do that. And we hold space for that. And then they spend time on the table. When they come off of the table, we have a discussion about their experience. And then I equip them with tools or advice that they can use to continue staying in energetic alignment. Okay. That sounds fabulous. <laughs> Sign me up. Um, yeah, so it's... you also mentioned earlier when you were talking about wellness, the holistic wellness approach. Like yeah. what... And that's something I've seen a lot of spouses ask for as well, a holistic wellness approach. So could you go into more of what that is and what that could entail? Absolutely. So I love talking about this with people because they, a lot of people think they can't access holistic or they think this word is too new agey or I, I could never be in that arena. So I love talking about this because actually most of us are practicing some holistic practices or techniques and we didn't even know it. So holistic really just means that it deals with the whole body as an, a full organism. And for me, that's mind, body, and spirit. We're dealing with the body as a whole. And these practices, any holistic practice can be, it can stand alone, but certainly can be complementary to any um, treatments that you may be receiving, medical treatments as well. So it the healing arts are known as complementary practices. Holistic care can stand alone, but can also be a complementary practice to whatever you are experiencing now in your life. So let me give you an example. Yeah. People think, uh, okay, I, I don't do those kind of things and energy and all of that, but I would pose this question, how many of you have gone to receive a massage? Mm -hmm. Massage is a holistic practice, yes. So we think that we are not you know, participating or using these holistic practice techniques, but most of us are. We just don't have the awareness that it's under this holistic umbrella. When you are, that's a body practice, but it can also kind of be a mind practice. What I know when I'm getting a massage, I am zoning out, I'm yeah. really, relaxed in my body and that's allowing my mind to relax. So we, we are addressing all of the parts of the body in that moment. Um, and so again, coming back to that word holistic, things like meditation, this is a holistic practice. We're allowing, we are, and it's also a mindful practice because we are keeping our awareness and attention in the moment and allowing the body to relax, allowing the mind to relax and just kind of listen. Would you consider journaling part of that holistic approach or is that kind of a side type thing? To me, journaling is like the icing on the cake. Okay. Um, I, um, I am a writer by nature, that's my first love, but I think that everyone should journal. I, it, I think it's beneficial to everyone and I kind of suggest this to probably 90% of my clients because it can be so beneficial. Now here's the catch with journaling. A lot of people have this perception that journaling means I'm sitting down writing in a book and it looks like dear diary. Right. That's what I, that's yes. where my mind goes to. Yeah. Some people that thought is not only intimidating, but probably turns their stomach a little and that's okay. So for me, when I, teach people how to journal, I always advise them, one, the journal can be a 25 cent composition notebook from Walmart. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. What's important is what you're putting into the journal. How it gets in there doesn't matter. So it does not have to be an essay format. I encourage people to write thought bubbles, to write speech fragments, to create a spider chart, for some people, that's the way their brain works best. When they can see things in a box and create potential solutions, that's the way their brain works. The importance and the benefit of journaling is that it allows you to download the thoughts from the mind onto paper. When you have a thought in your mind, that might be a plan, it might be something you're worried about, that thought is jumbled up with everything else, with the grocery list, with what you do later with you don't want to forget to do the laundry and you know and the current health situation it's all floating in there but when we can download that thought onto paper we can now action it 
it's now there, it's become a tangible thing, it's not going away, and we can always come back to it and work on it. So if that's something self-improvement, you can always continue to build on it and find a plan for that. If that's a, a problem you're trying to solve or a worry, sometimes our worries and stresses, when we write them on paper and then go back and read them, we can see, okay, that's probably not plausible, that probably wouldn't happen, and we can begin to come down from that anxious state yeah, and it's interesting because a lot of guests from previous Coffee Connection Lives have also talked about journaling. So I just, I feel like it's time for me to get a, a journal, like you said, just get something out and just start to, to create something or write down words, like you said. I like to, I've seen people with journals, or not even journals, but kind of even like a sketchbook. And they'll mm -hmm. sit there like at a park or just sit outside in nature or even, you know, in their living room and they just kind of sketch what they're seeing. And that's probably a way you could start too, right? Like start to draw your coffee cup and then where does that take your mind to and then start to go off that? I'm, I mean, Absolutely. is that a good way to start? Uh, it, yes. If I okay. could just pull out my journals and show you and I have tons. I have doodles in all of my journals. Some of the doodles are trees or swirls or hearts, and some of them are very geometric. And that's just the way the mind works. And it's also very calming. Drawing, at a doodling, mm -hmm. uh, coloring can be so meditative. So that's, that's another uh, bag altogether when we talk about meditation and what people think meditation is. But something like doodling, coloring those things can be very meditative as well yeah i have an adult coloring book that's just you know designs and everything and i think it's time to break that out get out the colored pencils and take some time for myself <laughs> i have definitely been doing that these past <laughs> few well this months. is great okay good um and i know well i want to talk about yoga because mm -hmm. we i know there are a lot of people that are interested in yoga and it's funny for for my journey with yoga i was a brand new military spouse and i'd never done yoga ever um and it was on a military base where i saw there was a yoga class at the gym so i went i didn't bring a mat i i think i was wearing very loose clothing like sweatpants <laughs> i i didn't know what to expect and honestly, my first experience wasn't so good because I was so concerned about what people thought of me when I didn't know what I was doing with down dog or Cobra pose. I still don't think I do that right. Um, and just what, for a first time yoga person, mm -hmm. what, can, what can we tell them to ease their mind, what to expect? And then we'll go into a conversation more about the advanced yoga, um, a yogi, I guess you could say and what yes. their experience can be. Sure. Um, so the first thing I would say to anyone who is intimidated is do not be afraid. Yoga is for every body, every body type, every body av ability and level of accessibility. Um, and this is something that I really wouldn't have been able to advocate until after my training. Okay. Uh, going through that training, we really learn how to modify the poses for everyone, how to lead everyone from the beginner to advanced in these poses, and that's crucial. So if you are going to a class with someone who has gone through yoga teacher training, I would, I would say that most of the time you can trust that they have been trained how to modify a pose for you, even if this is your first time on the mat. What's important about being on the mat is that it is like you are reserving space and time for yourself for an hour or the duration of the class on this rectangular mat. This is all about you. So you should never worry about what the other people are doing mm -hmm. or what level they are at. It's your time on the mat. And what's important is to honor your body in every movement that you do. From one day to the next, my body may feel completely different. So I might be able to get into a full expression of a pose one day, and the next day my body may just say, uh-uh, not today, sister. So you have to honor your body where it's at any time that you're on the mat and never be afraid to share with the, the instructor, today is my first day at yoga. Yeah, because I think that's good. Yes, yes, absolutely. 
And, and that's what I learned too, is that you really just need to focus on yourself when you're doing it because this practice is for you. And then that's when I started to really enjoy going to yoga and is when I, I thought nobody's watching what I'm doing. Everybody's focusing on what they're doing. So um, just became a little bit more confident in what I was doing, but it still cracks me up when, you know, everybody um, is in class and then they're like, okay, you have free time or whatever you want to do. And then everybody goes into like a handstand or a headstand and doing all kinds of crazy things. And I'm like, how, mm -hmm. how do you do that? That is amazing. So I'm not there yet, but someday. Um, well, guess what, Nicole, I'm not there yet either. Okay. I I am definitely not the flexi bendy yogi. Um, I am still a work in progress and I think all humans are still a work in progress. So even for myself in my own class, there might be someone in a full headstand and I cannot, I'm still working <laughs> on it. So, and that's okay. That's where we have to have grace and compassion for our own bodies and make this journey about ourselves and not what someone else is doing. I love that. And, and no shame in going into child's pose oh, at no. any time in your practice. I say at the beginning of my class, usually, if your yoga today is laying down on the mat, I welcome you to take that. I love that. I love that. We'll just do that after this coffee connection. Yeah, just lay on a yoga mat for <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Good. Okay. Um, and then etiquette for yoga studios. So is there anything that you can share with the group today on etiquette, maybe stuff that we didn't know when you go into a yoga studio? Um, and the only reason I asked that is the last yoga practice I went to, uh, there was a lady who had bracelets on and they were beautiful. And I would totally wear these bracelets outside the yoga studio. But every time she went up, the bracelets went tink, 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 tink. And so <laughs> it was just, and then one more tink. Um, so it was, it was just really distracting, but things like that, like um, making sure your phones are off and that kind of advice. What, what kind of etiquette should we practice? That's, that's a key one is uh, being mindful of the space and the sounds that you may create for others. So having your phone turned off is key. Even your, uh, if you've got your Fitbit on, for example, setting the notifications to off because even that vibrating can be a distraction for others. Yeah. So having noisy jewelry, like you said, is important. <laughs> also taking your shoes off. And generally, it is advised that you practice yoga barefoot. Yeah. It allows you to get a better grip on the mat. So be mindful of that and keep that in mind. But really, and you always have, you should always have the option to bring your mat if you'd like to. But most places, a yoga studio will always have mats available to you. Gyms mostly will have mats available to you. But you can always also bring your own mat if you'd like. Um, and then, of course, the standard sanitation practices of making sure, sure that you are cleaning your mats and props after. So that is the basic etiquette is to be mindful of the sounds that you can create that may be a distraction to others and that does not include breathing because breath is a big part of yoga and sometimes breathing makes noise and that's okay we have some actual breath practice that are intended to make noise <laughs> well the one thing too that i've noticed with yoga so there's the you know be mindful of the noises and everything like that. But I've gone to a lot of yoga classes to simply make friends and try to connect, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, if I like yoga, they'll like, yo you know, and if they like yoga, we'd be great friends. Um, how do you, and you and with your classes too, how do you recommend making friends in that yoga class, maybe afterwards and just kind of reaching out and saying, hey, you wanna hang out? Do you wanna grab coffee? Like how, what do you recommend there? That after is the perfect time. And okay. here's what I noticed with my classes, most times when people are arriving, especially if they have been there, been to a yoga class before, once they set up their mat and they sit, they are trying to get themselves into the mind space, preparing to relax. So for some people, this is a part of their practice. But some people like to linger outside and chat. You know, they may have set up their mat and they may be in the foyer area or in the common area. That's a perfect time to socialize. But after, that is when you will find beautiful time to connect. You might be able to connect with someone and say, 
hey, your tree pose was beautiful, or mm -hmm. I really had a hard time today. Uh, do you find that easy creating, you know, those talking points with one another? Yeah, it's a beautiful time to connect afterwards because you know that there is some common thread right. with everyone in that room because everyone showed up. I love that. I love that. And so now that we're doing a lot of virtual yoga, um, any tips there by doing yoga in your living room or any little space that you can get away to do yoga? Do you have any tips there or even... Um, I don't know if you have any websites that you recommend for that. Mm -hmm. So yes, yes and yes. Nicole. Okay, good. Um, you can yoga at home, even if you don't have all of the bells and whistles, meaning all of the props. Mm -hmm. So for example, some of the props that you might use in yoga, you might see a block. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have blocks, you can stack books. So you can use that for support or to bring the ground up for you. We say when we use a block, we're bringing the ground up so that people can find it more accessible. Some people cannot reach their toes. So let's go ahead and bring that ground up for you so that you can feel and experience the pose. We use straps sometimes in yoga poses to extend a stretch, to lengthen the body. You can use a belt. Mm -hmm. If you've got a, like a knee-high sock, <laughs> yes. you can use that. So you can definitely be resourceful in your own home and find ways to access yoga. Um, I know that there are plenty of websites and studios that are doing yoga online. Mm -hmm. I am doing virtual yoga with my yoga studio, but I know that there is a great resource, Allo ALO Yoga. They are offering free classes. So it is available and out there right now. And I just love that. I love that so many more um, organizations are offering free content for people yeah. to stay in motion and to really support their physical well-being in this way. And one that I've really enjoyed uh, when I can't get away is yoga with Adrian. I've really enjoyed doing yes. yoga with her as well. Yes, there is, of course, there are uh, an abundance of yoga exists on YouTube. Yes. What's about that is you can say, 15 minute yoga. So if you know about it, we've only got 15 minutes, like nap time will only last 30 minutes. <laughs> right. I'm going to do a little bit of yoga. So it does offer you those resources. Um, and yeah, yoga with Adrian's a really good one too. Excellent. Good. Okay. So let's do some yoga. Um, okay. And it, for anybody that's getting ready to do some yoga, feel free to get onto your mat because Marilis is going to show us some poses. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just going to hang out here on my chair, on my comfy chair in my cozy corner and practice along as much as I can. So yes. what can we, what, what can you teach us today? What should we know? So first, as I sit in chair pose <laughs> with no chair, um, <laughs> I would say first thing is know your body, honor your body every time when you are practicing yoga know your limitations. Part of yoga is information gathering, allowing your body to inform you how it feels, where the tight spots are, where the cranky spots are. So listen to your body. If you are pregnant, always consider before and make sure that yoga is okay in whatever phase of pregnancy that you might be in. If you have any physical conditions, you also want to make sure you are consulting with your doctor to make sure that yoga is okay. Great, good. <laughs> so I want to show you a couple of the standard and easy poses that you can do right in your own home. So super relaxing. I'll begin with our standard pose called mountain pose or Tadasana. So mountain pose is great for grounding, which really just means anchoring your energy to the earth and the present moment. Beautiful, mindful pose. So in a Tadasana pose, you want to make sure that your feet are your hip width apart. Your pelvis is tilted slightly forward, teeny tiny glute engagement here, just to keep the core zipped up. Your chest is lifted, shoulders are rolled back, hands are out, gaze is lifted, breathe. You're emulating a mountain. You're feeling the mightiness and the strength of a mountain in your body. So you will see this pose in probably every yoga class that you do. So that is your standard. That's called mountain pose or Tadasana. I also want to add, never be intimidated when you hear the Sanskrit names of yoga. It's okay. 
don't worry about it. They'll stick eventually. Just watch what the instructor is doing and follow along. So well, don't. I, let I was going to say it sounds familiar, but I wouldn't yes. be able to <laughs> rattle those off again. <laughs> so I'll show you another standing pose. And a lot of you have probably seen this. You saw this on uh, my picture when we started in the slide and it's tree pose. So what's important about tree pose again is to make sure your hips are your hip width apart. Tree pose is a lot about grounding your body. So anchoring your energy to the earth like a tree would and keeping your body steady, tall and erect. Great for posture. We want to make sure that we are keeping mindful of our posture Right now, we're spending a lot of time at home and sitting. And it's also great for balance, which is great for focus. So having your mind be in focus. So tree pose begins by anchoring your weight into one leg. You lift the other and just have your knee lifted. You're kind of just hovering on your toes here. I always begin a tree pose with my hands pointed straight down. Like my fingers are growing into the ground. It helps me to lift my chest. You're always focusing on breath in yoga. Pairing movement with breath as often as you can. On that bent leg, you want to turn your knee outward. So knee is facing outward here, and you're going to bring that ankle, that heel just in toward the ankle. This right here is tree pose. Tree pose has variations with the arms. Have hands or you can have your hands lifted into a cactus or goddess arms pose. We call this, you might hear the teacher say, feel free to extend your branches. That means you can just lift to what feels good in your body. And really what's important here is finding the balance that feels good in your body. If you want to lift the leg like you may have seen in some poses, you'll want to lift the heel up the side of the calf and stop before you get to your knee. What's important here is you never want to have your foot on your knee. You can push the knee outward and really create some issues there. So always below or above if that's accessible to you and never feel bad if you lose your balance. Come back to it. Focus on your breath and find somewhere in the room that you can gaze to harness your energy. Super important in yoga. What you do on one side, you have to do on the other side to create balance. So I'm just going to give a little tree love to my body on this side as well. So find the pose that feels good in your body. So that's your standard tree. Abs are zipped up, chest is lifted, focusing on breath. So those are the standing poses I'd like to show you. Again, tree pose, you might hear that. I will show you some seated poses. So Great. one of them is garland pose or what we call the yogi squat, also known as malasana. I always encourage a block with this. So you come over, hover over your block. You might start seated, you might start standing. You want your bottom to be right on this block. So you can come down onto the block, find your steady point. This is great for pregnancy. Great for the legs, for the hips, to open the hips. You want to plant your feet, bring your hands to heart center. So the elbows are helping a little to open, to open the hips here and breathe. And for the advanced yogi, they may not need the block. So oh, you can wow. yeah. well. Then I'll bring you right, staying on the ground to bound angle. This is, and hopefully you can see me fully. This is a great pose to open the hips. So if your groins and hips are tight, you can come into bound angle. Bound angle, the feet are together. So keeping your feet together, your hands can be at your ankles, lifting the chest. And you breathe and hold this pose. And this allows the legs to open and those hips to open. This can be really tight for some people. So this is where you want to use a block underneath your knees here or stack some books with a, a little bit of padding over it. Then I'll show you my very favorite pose ever. It's the forward fold. So super easy, but this is always great if I've been sitting for a while or after I've gone for a jog, this is beautiful. This helps to release the back, helps with the hips. So in a forward fold, you 
your width distance apart. Inhale the hands up and overhead. Come down in a swan dive. So when you hear this, now you know what a swan dive is here. Extend the hand out, hinge at the hips, let the body come down, hands come down. If it's accessible to you to touch your mat, you can feel free to bend your knees here. This is your forward fold. But the sweet spot in forward fold is when you can grab your elbows and allow your head to hang between your arms here and breathe. You can sway side to side. What I love about this pose is it's naturally releasing the back with gravity. So you're not doing any pulling, you're just letting it happen naturally. Coming up out of a forward fold because you're kind of upside down here and you want to be mindful of that. Generously bend the knees and come up slowly. So I, I'm in forward fold at least four times a day, minimal. So those are some easy kind of beginner poses that you can do, especially if you are spending a lot of time sitting. Do that forward fold. Do that kind of uh, bound angle sit with your feet together and let your body open up. And of course, I'll show you child's pose because that's the that's sweet Wow, yes. <laughs> One of our friends in the chat room asked what our favorite uh, yoga pose is, and I, my mind went to child's pose. Yes. So. <laughs> so pose is the easiest pose, and we always say you are free to take child's pose and come to child's pose at any time that you like. So to get into child's pose, for me traditionally, I begin, inhale my arms up, swan dive down, come into a plank, drop the knees, push back. So in child's pose, you're just pushing your hips back and extending the arms forward. It might feel good to you to take a wider leg stance here. These are wide tether and come down. Child's pose is a pose that you get to stay in for as long as you like. <laughs> I love it. And I think that this is just me, but I'm, I'm hoping maybe there's some other people out there that, that think this too, but who knows that with yoga, I thought that I, if I wanted to do yoga, it needed to be the entire practice. So going through from the very beginning to the very end, and it needs to be about an hour session or something like that. But you're saying, and you're showing us like, you can do simple yoga poses throughout the day. You can just do your forward fold or do a tree pose while you're doing laundry or um, in the kitchen or whatever. Just do a simple pose and, and that's good too. Yes, absolutely. Now there are poses that you probably, I would discourage doing without having warmed up your whole body. Okay. So something like a warrior pose, a yeah. dance pose. These are poses that require warmth in the body, gotcha. you know, some activation to get into them. But certainly, forward fold anytime. You can take a bound angle anytime. All of these, yes, you can do pretty much any time of day. And this, if you've got kids at home, this is really fun for them too, because they're seeing you in these funny poses and thinking, I would try that. Yes. So this is a great thing to do with other members of your family as well. I love it. Well, thank you for that. That was super helpful. And I hope everybody watching right now was able to partake or join in on some of those poses. Um, the next topic I wanted to touch on is selfishly for me, um, <laughs> because my, my watch tells me throughout the day, you need to, you need to breathe because it can detect my heart, heartbeat or heart rate or whatever. So what are some breathing poses that we can do, or not poses, but breathing techniques we can do throughout the day uh, to calm ourselves down um, when we're in maybe a stressful situation, or you have anxiety, um, what can we do to help that? Yeah. So there are two uh, practice, breath practices, breath techniques that I like to teach for people to have in their toolkit, no matter what, any situation. The first one is a mindfulness breath practice. It's called two feet, one breath. This is the easiest breath practice you will ever learn. And 
and that you can use lifelong. So I'm going to guide you in this practice. So wherever you are, you want your feet to be on the ground, but you can be sitting cross leg. Your awareness is coming to your feet is where we're going. Okay. So what we do is we'll, we'll be closing our eyes and then we will be taking an inhale and we will be perceiving our right foot. So wiggling those toes on the right foot and on the exhale, we'll go to the left. So let's practice all together. Everybody, wherever you are, just close your eyes for a second. Making sure and everybody's eyes are shut. Okay. I'm, I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> eyes are closed. Inhale, wiggle the right toes. Exhale, wiggle the left toes. Cleansing inhale. Releasing exhale. Open your eyes. So what's really nice about that practice is you can do that anytime, anywhere. You can do it for as many rounds as you'd like. And the reason that it works is for those moments, your awareness is taken away from whatever that situation trigger is, and you are just right toes. Okay, I can feel my right toes. Yeah left toes, I can feel my right toes, so left toes. So all of the focus is on what you're doing in that moment, as opposed to whatever that trigger is, whatever that stressful thing is. So, it's a, so that's why it's considered a mindfulness practice. It brings your awareness back to the present moment. I love it, thank you. I love that, you can take that anywhere, anytime. Nobody even needs to know you're doing it. If you're like in the doctor's office and feeling anxious about your visit, you can just lower your gaze to your knees and do the same thing. Great. The second one I would say is for a more higher, uh, a trigger that's higher anxiety or more worry, or you're kind of, maybe you're annoyed, you know? Right. We all know, right? We've got tons of things going on at home and maybe we're just annoyed at the dog running around and the kids chasing it. And it just is what it is. So I call this the four by seven practice. And this is one of my favorite to bring the anxiety down. It's a quick inhale for a count of four and a long exhale for a count of seven. Okay. The reason that it works is that quick inhale brings you right back to your senses, right back to the moment. The exhale slows the heart rate. So I'll lead you in this. We'll do two rounds. So wherever you're at, go ahead and close your eyes or lower your gaze, whatever's comfortable for you. I'm going to lead you in the breath. Inhale, two, three, four, pause. Exhale, five, three, one. Inhale, two, three, four, pause. Exhale, five, three, one. Deep breath in. <sighs> let it all go. There's that yoga breath noise when you just can let it all go. Inhale. <sighs> Release it. Just let it go. So this is a quick snap you back to your senses, get you grounded back into the moment. Just bring you back, lower the heart rate, four by seven, anywhere, anytime. That's perfect. And I try to do some breathing techniques on my three-year-old when he gets really upset and tell him to take a deep breath and exhale. And what he really likes, and I might be saying this wrong, is it a lion's breath or something like that where they go, <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So lion's breath is quite a pose. Lion's breath is a yoga breath technique. Um, we call it pranayama. So you might hear that. And it just means breath technique. So lion's breath looks like a deep inhale. And on the exhale, your tongue is hanging out. <sighs> right? So what's important about this pose is your arms are out. You're in a pose. Think of a lion. So allow your body to come into the pose of a lion. Your, your chest is lifted. Your arms are in extension. You might be on your knees. And you're just releasing. This is wonderful. I am so excited that your son is doing this yes. because more children need to do this. I will say as the mom of an adult that now has, uh, he's um, 19 now, kind of an adult, you know? <laughs> right, right. Uh, 
but he's always struggled with ADHD and the breath techniques that I've taught him and teaching him meditation throughout his, you know, youth. I didn't, I was like, oh, is this even helping? And it wasn't until he moved away and said to me, mom, I practiced my breath techniques and I felt so much better today. And I'm thinking, mic drop, my job is yeah. done. Yes. So, yeah. t- yes, share this time with your children as well, with any of your loved ones, with friends. These are wonderful techniques. Again, holistic. You can use them anytime, anywhere. So I love that. Oh, thank you. And I'm glad that you're saying that's okay to do because when we're in the heat of the moment, I just say, let's take a deep breath together. And we all do it as a family. We all take deep breaths. And then if he's still mad, then we do the lion breath. And then that's when everybody starts to giggle a little bit and we all feel better. So (laughs) great. Um, So you currently work with a lot of military spouses as well as active duty service members. Um, What's a common theme that you see across the board with this group um, as you practice wellness with them? So there are, I would say, probably two things that uh, stand out to me. The first is self-identity. A lot of uh, spouses struggle with who am I? Who am I in this arena? I now have become a person who travels with my spouse wherever they may need to go. And I've forgotten to do the things for myself or I've stopped doing the things that I love doing for myself. So it can lead to a feeling of loss, of disconnect from your own self. So a lot of people who come to me, they want to connect with their own inner light again. They want to find that. They want to find a way that they can create harmony in their lives where they don't feel selfish about self-care, about tending to their own needs, but they can also feel revitalized and present caring for their family and supporting their service member. So that's a huge thing. And we, I have a to feel isolated. Isolation is huge yeah. within community. So they also are feeling that sense of disconnect from the greater community. So a lot of that, a lot of my work is empowerment. So empowering spouses and equipping them with the tools that they can begin to utilize in their daily lives. And sometimes that means I'm providing them resources to local organizations or to something that MWR might provide. So, you know, it really kind of that after piece in a session right. is really important to me because this is where I can begin to give tools, things that you can do outside of here to continue your growth journey, your uh, stress reduction journey or whatever that is. And like I said, for service members, most often it is just that time to have quiet and reduce the stress. Yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I wanted to, we've, I've asked you a lot of questions, but I do want to open this up to the group that's here with us right now. So Danielle, are there any questions out there? Danielle's our producer. Um, are there any questions out there that are coming through any common themes or anything that um, you're seeing that this, the, the group wants Marilis to, to touch on? Yeah, no questions so far, but I invite anyone who might have one to throw it in the Q&A box. I will share with you all that we've had a lot of fun in the chat box talking about our favorite (laughs) yoga mats and our favorite yoga poses. And um, lots of people um, are talking about um, doing the breathing techniques with their kids as well. So that's awesome. And we've got a few yogis in the house, as well as a couple of fellow yoga teachers. Um, And so uh, we have such a wonderful community. Speaking of energy, right? We've got wonderful energy here. So um, yeah, so if anyone has questions, please feel free to um, throw them in that Q&A. Maybe Marilis can tell us what her favorite pose and mat are. Yes, I can. Sorry. (laughs) Mats. So I definitely prefer a mat that has a thicker width. I have tender knees. I'm just bony and achy in my knees. So I like a mat that has good padding. So I know Gaia makes good mats. Manduka makes great mats. So you can find, you want to find the width 
that's great for you, that's supportive of your knees. So even though those itty bitty mats that are kind of thin, those are great in a pinch and they're accessible to many people. But if you really want to begin a practice, you want to have something that's supporting your knees, supporting your body. Plus it's super comfy when you lay down in the end for your final pose of Shavasana or corpse pose. As far as favorite pose, for me, again, I, I cannot get enough of a forward fold. I particularly love a wide leg forward fold. So it's just like the pose I showed, except your legs are wider. And for me, that really allows me to release my back and to find some flexion in my hips, which, you know, when we're sitting down for long periods of time, where some of us might be doing right now, it just helps bring some of that movement. I also love pigeon pose. Pigeon pose is a great hip opener, but I was not going to show that today because that is definitely a pose that um, if for beginners should be done with some direction and guidance. I did pigeon pose a lot when I was running. So I know that's very helpful to do after a long run. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I see a couple questions are coming into the chat box. So Danielle, if there's anything there, otherwise I can keep going with a couple more questions that I have. Yes, no, we have a couple. Thank you for that. Um, we were actually talking about Manduka in the chat box. So that's great to hear. Um, next question. I know you mentioned earlier and I'll throw it in the chat again for everyone the Insight Timer as a free meditation app. Um, but do you have any suggestions for guided meditations, maybe some other apps or podcasts that you would recommend? So I, I would say you can also find guided meditations on YouTube. Um, I kind of pick and choose when I want to use a YouTube. What I like about Insight Timer, which I recommended, is that it allows you to one, choose a theme. So maybe today you're feeling anxious. Maybe today it's worry. Maybe today you just want to feel relaxed. You can type that word in the search box and it will drop down plenty of meditation themed on that. Furthermore, you can pick the time you have. So once you've got, okay, today I'm working on anxiety, reducing anxiety, but I've only got 10 minutes. You can then sort it into just 10 minutes. You can sort it into five minutes to 15 minutes. So it really allows you to kind of narrow down what you're looking for. I hear that Calm, C-A-L-M, is a really good app as well. I haven't used it personally, but that's another good resource. I've used Calm and I love it, so. Oh. <laughs> Yes, thank you. And thank you to those sharing some um, suggestions in the chat box as well. Um, so Marilla, so you know, we have a podcast suggestion from Kimberly for Tara Brack. I uh, hope I said that right. <laughs> so we, we will all go check out that podcast. And thank you, Marcy, for the link you shared um, as well. Um, Okay, so we do have two, three more questions. Another one going back to the breathing techniques. Um, yeah. They just want to hear and learn a little bit more about um, the differences between the ones that you only breathe in and out through your nose versus when you release or perform like the lion's breath and what the sort of rationale for those are. So it really depends on what you're addressing. Something like lion's breath, we're really working on releasing. So um, when you're exhaling in a lion's breath, it's full, it's a full exhale. It comes from you know, your belly and you're just ah, letting it all go. When we're doing something with nose breathing, we're really working on calming the system and it's much more of a controlled breath. So we're bringing our awareness to the breath and act, I don't really like the word control because you're really allowing yourself to flow but it calms more when you're just breathing through your nose. You're just letting the inhale come through and the exhale come through. So I think in short, when we're working with an open mouth, so exhaling with an open mouth, it's more of a release. Energetically, physically, we're releasing. So great for releasing stress. That's probably, I would say, why kids scream when they're frustrated on the playground. They're just, ah, I'm so mad. I wanted to get on that swing. They're releasing the stress. 
and the nasal breathing, we are just welcoming calm. So allowing for that flow to calm us. Thank you. I, th I think early on we were chatting about already feeling the calm, just listening to, <laughs> to this and being with you. Um, one last question we have is, what are some beginner Reiki exercises we can, we can do at home to tap into our own healing powers? Okay, so Reiki is definitely something that is facilitated. Uh, so just so that you understand the process of Reiki. So to become, I am a Reiki master. And that is um, just like a yoga training would be. That is a training and it is a certification that we receive. So I can share with you some ways that you can be mindful and work on your own energy. So I mentioned that Reiki deals with the chakras, so the energy systems in the body. I will say that yoga does as well. So I personally, the class that I teach at my yoga studio is chakra yoga. So my classes are designed around the energy centers. But you can bring calm to yourself and help harness the energy in those centers on your own pairing them with breath techniques so for example if i know that i'm feeling really nervous i might place my hand on my uh under my rib cage that's the solar plexus and i might place the other hand on my forehead these two chakras are complementary i'm calming the belly is where the nerves you know how when you get nervous and your belly kind of starts to flutter so we're calming that and we're calming the mind so i'm using these energy centers just to bring calm and you just breathe These two chakras work together to balance one another. So just having an awareness of your body. And even if you know nothing about the energy systems in the body, trust your intuition. We all have intuition. You know how sometimes something happens and you just naturally go, oh my goodness. Chances are whatever that trigger was exists in the heart chakra. So place your hands where you feel that anxiety or where you want to calm. And you were probably right. I love that. And we'll be using that a lot, I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of us will be able to use a lot of these tips. Well, you know, we, this was the fastest hour of my life. <laughs> we, we're at an hour. So I just want everybody to know how they can find you, how they can keep in touch with you, see what you're up to. Uh, and we'll start with that. Sure, absolutely. So I am on social. I am online. My website is empoweredenergy.me. And that is my handle on my social channel. So on Instagram and on Facebook, that's how you would find me, empoweredenergy.me. Feel free to join in. I post a lot of tips in there. I talk about energy awareness a lot, um, give some encouragement and advice on ways that you can manage your energy, um, and a lot of positive feel-good stuff, plus some of my quirky day-to-day -day things too. I love it. Good. All right. And then we have some upcoming events that we want to share with everybody, um, all virtual. So we, I also want, I want to make sure that everybody is checking their local USO Facebook page because there is a lot going on at our local USOs, uh, lots of virtual programs. If you're not close to a USO, then maybe you check out where you were previously um, located, where you where you've been previously throughout your military journey, because they probably have some fun programming going on. Um, so one, check out your local USO Facebook page. Also, very exciting news: we have a USO military spouse Facebook group. So if you just go to USO's Facebook page and then on the left, go down to groups. And this is for military spouses only. You'll have to answer a couple questions, um, but we have that now as a resource for our military spouses. We have some Michael Quinn um, Mastering LinkedIn workshops happening. One is tonight from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. And then Thursday, April 2nd, it's a Mastering LinkedIn Ask Mike session. So it'll be a lot of questions for Mike. Um, on how we can get our LinkedIn pages to the best that they can be from seven to nine on April 2nd, Eastern time. Um, I know Danielle's probably gonna put it, some links in here for you. So you have all of that in front of you. 
Then what we're going to try to do is do a weekly Coffee Connection Live so that we can stay connected and share information and just have coffee together once a week. So uh, Friday, April 3rd, next Friday, we'll, at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, we're going to have a Coffee Connection Live with Maria Reed. And we're going to do a project where we essentially dip a mug or some sort of um, I would say a jug or a mug or even, I'm, I'm not sure if a flower pot will work, stay tuned, um, into water and fingernail polish. And then it creates this beautiful product, finished product for all of us. So uh, come join us for that. And then we also wanted to make sure you all knew that the Independent Wellness Summit that we partnered with them to do this month, it is going to be up until the end of the month. So there's a lot of great, um, podcasts, I guess you could say, or you can listen along to some of the great speakers that they have. Um, this is free for you. So check out Independent Wellness Summit. Um, you can go to their website and check out everything that they have going on there. So a lot going on. We really appreciate everybody joining us today. I do want to do, we've been doing these selfies, Marilis, where we take our USO mugs and we mm -hmm. take a picture so that the spouses in the group can also take a picture with us and then yep. share on your Instagram, on your Twitter, or on your Facebook that you had coffee with us today and use the hashtag USO Mill Spouse. So we'll just do a quick picture. Awesome, I hope you all got it. That was a really fast picture. Um, but thank you so much for joining us, Marilis. Stay healthy. Thank you for all of your guidance and information. We'll be putting a lot of, of it to great use. And uh, we'll, we'll, we look forward to seeing the rest of you soon. Yes, care, thank everybody. you. Bye.